Okay, so hello and welcome back to another shader tutorial in Unity. Uh, in this one we're going to be making a dissolve shader. As you can see in front of me, this is what I prepared earlier. Um, I've just been messing around trying different effects, seeing what I could include for the tutorial, and I feel like this is a good uh, point to show you what we can do. So, ow, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to delete uh, these and remake them in a, in a minute. Um, so what this does is it uses noise, which if you didn't already know, is kind of like a way to randomize how stuff happens. Um, so obviously like this kind of dissolve pattern isn't me doing it pre-made, it's, it's randomized. And then we use a time or a sign time curve, which goes up and down, which means that the value goes uh, higher and lower. And when it's a higher, we can um, miss out more of the texture. When it's lower, we can uh, have more of the texture or the other way around, you can invert things, you can do what you want. Um, so anyway, let's get into making it. So let's delete this, delete this. And here's our pink capsule. You can use whatever shape you want. I'll actually put it on, I'll apply it to loads of different shapes to show how it works. But um, we need to, as always, create a new material. We'll just call it, uh, I'll keep the same name, like dissolve mat. We'll put it on here. Now it actually has a material. And we'll make the shader for it. So we have the uh, dissolve shader. And we'll apply that as always and open shader graph here it is on my monitor one second okay so the things for this on the pbr master node what we want to change is we want to reduce the alpha now that's not going to do anything currently because it's not transparent if it was then you would see the alpha goes down to 50 or well, 0.5 sorry the reason we do this is for when we're kind of cutting out the um alpha later to make it dissolve we change this value you'll see you'll see um, and everything else can stay the same. We'll, we'll have an omission for the um, edge red bits or whatever color you want. Um, though we do want to change uh, this to two-sided so that when we cut away from the uh, mesh we can see on the other side otherwise it looks a bit odd. Um, so what should we do here? So for inputs we want, uh, we can have two inputs but I'm going to stick with one. The reason why you can have a second one is because um, if you want to control the dissolve by hand, like you want to put in an actual value, then you would use that as your input. But for this, I'm going to use time, which will just change itself. So the only input I need is going to be the like edge width. Um, and I'll leave that by default. I found out that point 0.1 looks pretty good. Uh, you obviously mess around if you want. And because it's in the inspector, we can edit it uh, in, well, the inspector. Um, so let's go over here, we need quite a bit of room. Okay, so what do we want for this? Well, we want our noise, and if you, there's two different kinds of noise, there's gradient and simple. We're gonna stick to simple. And remember, as I said with anything in this, if you right click and press open documentation, then you can see exactly what it does. There you go, and it even tells you how it looks in normal shader code. But noise is simple enough, it just, you know, uh, if I zoom in, well, I'm gonna. It's not just zooming in. This, this is actually changing the value. Uh, so the white bits are zero, the black bits are one, and the grey bits in between are between zero and one. So it's like a the zero bits you can uh, kind of cut out, and the one bits you can include. Y it'll make more sense if you if you don't already get it. Don't worry. Um, so let's reduce the amount to like we want it. We want it. You can do what looks right for you. And obviously this looks a bit messy right now, but you'll we'll visualize it in a second. So we want time as well. Now, time has different outputs, and so the time one just constantly increases. Sine time goes up and down, cosine goes up and down, but the cosine and sine graph is different. Um, you, you do maths, you know what I mean. And then I've not actually used delta or smooth delta, and I've never needed to, so if I ever get around to using those, then I'll let you know. I feel like if I press open documentation, it does tell you, probably. It's very helpful. Um, current frame time, current frame time smoothed. Huh, well, there you go. I don't use it yet I haven't used it yet um, but anyway we need steps and steps basically take in um, a value and a kind of limit and if it goes above the limit it um, ignores it or is it below the limit I'm pretty sure it's if it's greater than or equal to otherwise it returns zero so as soon as the value goes be below one wait let's just put in our let's put in our values so let's go and uh, put this into here and we'll put in our noise into here and as you see, when the time goes, there you go. 
So now that's kind of showing you how it would cut it out. Now, I don't know if this will work straight off the bat. We haven't actually like... Oh, it does work. Okay, obviously this isn't this isn't the final product. This looks pretty bad, but if we look in here, there we go. That's like a very very simple dissolve thing. As you see them, they uh, it goes and it comes back because the time is going up and down, up and down. So the value is going up and down, up and down, and then it appears and disappears. And now we don't actually want uh, this, so we want to do some other effects first. The reason we've got edge width, we'll, we'll come to that later actually. Um, we want to have a way, well no, this is this is the dissolve effect, but it looks a bit it looks a bit bad without a kind of edge to it. So the way we get an edge is we want, well the edge width, let's bring that down here. And we want to add, now the reason we're adding edge width is, well think about it, so this value is going between, well, zero and one for the black and, black and white. Uh, let's take the sign time down here. Now we're going to take the exact same value this takes in, but we're going to add a value to it. So whatever edge width is, is getting added. Now, if we do a step, and we put these in here, uh, and put these above each other. So they look, they look very similar now, but they're actually different. And the way we can tell they're different is by, well, I don't really want to disconnect all these, but um, no, I'll do it for the sake of showing you. Um, so let's put in a vector one just for now. We'll, we'll uh, get rid of these connections and we'll put these in instead. So now, now I can change the value manually. And as you see, at any given point, the top one has like a higher value. Well, sorry, the bottom one has a higher value, which means more white because white is one and black is zero. So whatever value, th this one, because it's having an add to it, right, just keep in mind with vectors, um, sorry, we're not vectors, we're shaders. Um, everything is mass based and numbers. Generally, most of the time it's between zero and one. So if this has a certain value and I've added a, a constant to this one, I know it's a variable, but by constant, I mean like I've just added a straight point for it. This is always gonna have a f higher value in every point of the thing, which means that even though it has the exact same effect, obviously it goes between black and white. This one's always more ahead in the sense of having more white and this one has more black. And the benefit to this is we can kind of get an, a border, and you'll see why. Now let's put the time back in. So let's put that back in here. So obviously it's a bit harder to tell when it's animated, like the difference, but you can kind of see it's, it looks, this one looks delayed when it comes to changing to black, and this one looks delayed when it's changing to white. Now once we've got our uh, two steps like this, we want to get the subtract. Now what we can do is, not subgraph, we want subtract. Now, subtract, if you haven't already guessed, takes um, b from a, so it's a minus b. So <coughs> we actually want our nodes this way around. Make sure you get them the way, right way around, otherwise it'll be reversed. Now, as you can see here, it has the effect, but we have a kind of white rim to the black bits that's getting dissolved. And that white rim, we can alter the color of. So right now, if I was to output this to the alpha clip threshold, actually, no, this won't work, will it? Because, okay, it looks a bit odd. The reason is because we need to omit the white out bit. Because remember, as I keep saying, black is zero and white is one. So if you're outputting a value of one, it it's, does the thing and zero doesn't. And any value in between does like partially. Um, though some things only take in one or zero. Now, what we want to do is we want to take in a color for the um, edge color. As always, spelt, spelt the English way. And we're, we're going to use red because I like red. Well, actually, I've already used red for the tutorial, so let's, let's use blue, like blue too. Okay, uh, what's that? Okay. Um, so now what we can do is we can multiply. Now, if you multiply a color by a value, it means that if the value is one, the one part, which is the white parts, go to the color. <coughs> so now, as you see, the outline border gets multiplied, the one values get multiplied with the blue color. And if we omit that, Now you can see the border. Now the only reason it looks a bit odd right now is just because we haven't actually dissolved anything yet. We haven't got the cutout bit. So this is kind of like not dissolving it, but showing where it would be dissolved. So it looks, it looks a bit odd. But if we go back, all we need to do now is take the step over here and put this to the alpha clip threshold. Save it. Go down here. And now when it gets dissolved, just like I showed you at the start, it's getting dissolved in the same way, but 
when it's getting dissolved, the edges actually have the thing. Now if I go to the capsule and I go to the material and I can change the values from here, um, here's the edge width. Now if I put zero, this is back to what it used to look like. It just looks a bit bad with the dissolving. But obviously if I had 0.1, I have point point two. And if I had point one, how about go for a really small value? Okay, it's so small you can barely see it. Um, 0 0.005, or 0 0.05. There you go, that's nice. Uh, obviously I'm zoomed in actually, so that, that will look thinner than it actually is. There you go. Now obviously if you put a big value like one, well, one is the whole thing, so your value is between zero and one. Uh, point 0.5 would be well, pretty much half of it. It looks cool in a weird way, but you want to keep it low to like point 0.1 or point 0.2. Um, obviously, yeah, you can change the color, so Ooh. you could actually have the color probably changing, like, well, I mean, I don't know why you would want that, other than the fact it looks cool, I guess. But, um, yeah, so I know this was like quite a short shader tutorial, but I think it's a really cool effect that you can use. Uh, you can use it for like cloaking, I guess. Like if you have an enemy, uh, or well, you, and you want the visual, you want something to go from normal to invisible. You don't want it to just kind of pop out of existence. You can have like a cool transition effect with the shader. Obviously, for that you wouldn't use time. You would actually have a, an input which you would change yourself manually. Like so, for the for the end quickly, I'm just gonna change this back to a uh, input vector one called like a dissolve value and this has to go between we might as well put a slider in and put it between 0 and 1 uh, we want that in there we want that in there and now if I save this and go back whoops now we've got a slider for the amount to be dissolved so as you see as soon as some of it starts being dissolved we've got, let's go into scene view we have like the edge to it. Um, now because that bit hasn't been dissolved enough to actually disappear, we just see the edge bit. But as I say, like if I go here and I change the edge width to like point zero. Oh no, wait, sorry. Well, yeah, like point zero one. Now the bit that's been cut out has a very small, let's say two, three, four, five, six, you get it. Now if we go like to point 0.2, go back out here, looks a bit odd, but then as we dissolve, it goes away. I think point 0.2 is actually too much to be honest. That looks cooler. But yeah, you know, you can change it to have a custom value. But anyway, yeah, <coughs> I hope this tutorial will was good enough. <laughs> I hope you are liking the shader tutorials, I know quite a lot of people are asking for them and they get quite a lot of views. Because there's not many shader tutorials on the uh, internet right now, and I'm obviously not a master at it yet, but I'm still learning, and I like learning. And when I learn something new or make a cool shader, I'll make a video on it. Unless you have any particular shader kind of requests that you want to do, just keep in mind that shader graph is still quite limited. There are a few features which they either haven't added yet or aren't going to add, but I'm sure because of the amount of people that want it, they will end up adding at least everything in their power that they can add. But anyway, yeah, this has been the Dissolve Shader video. If you uh, want to support the channel, obviously like the videos you want to see more of, comment what you want to see more of, subscribing would help. Uh, I have playlists for Unity, Python, C++. I'm going to start a C Sharp series on making desktop applications, like simple, simple ones, keep it simple. Um, see if anyone likes those. Uh, I'll do web development videos, but not a lot of people seem to like those videos. So I might lay off them for a bit, but I'll make some eventually. Um, we have a Discord server. I'll link it in the description if you want to join that. We have, we're have we still growing. We've got like 20 or 30 members so far, which is pretty good. We have some nice chats in there. Uh, nerdy chats, as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, I hope you like this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.